we gather in the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, after being condemned to death by Pilate, you began your long journey to Calvary. The people you encountered along the way either accepted or rejected you. Pilate and Herod turned their backs on you, whereas Mary, Veronica, and the centurion accepted you. As we begin this devotional way of the cross, we all start making a journey of decision to accept you as Lord and Savior or to reject you. By listening to the thoughts of the biblical characters who met you along the way, may our hearts be moved to hear your call, a call to change and to follow you. Amen. The first station, Pilate condemns Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, we have to in the world. Pilate speaks. Of course I was there at the trial. History will probably say I could have prevented the Nazarene's death. But put yourself in my position. Those Jews were a horrible nation of people. Hard-headed, violent, and contemptuous. There was never any pleasing them. Once, when I brought portraits of the emperor into the Jewish temple, the Jews complained to the emperor himself. Even Rome feared their fanaticism and did not back me when I took action against them. I had only one thought, advancement out of this uncivilized backward nation. Then the Jewish leaders brought a harmless rabbi to be put to death. This Jesus told me he was the son of God. I'm a superstitious man. I don't deny it. I don't like prosecuting gods, even Jewish ones. So I did my best to free him. Instead, the mob begged for a murderer, a certain Barabbas, to be set free. Well, imagine what it's like to hear the mob shout, If this man goes free, Pilate, you are no friend of Caesar. Yes, another report to the emperor would have meant the end of my career. After all, a person must think of himself. You get ahead by playing the court game. So I condemned him. If you had been there, would you have done differently? Let us pray. Jesus, second station, Jesus accepts his cross. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because Barabbas speaks. Call me Barabbas, or whatever name you wish. I watched the Nazarene as he took up his cross, and I saw him fall again and again. You might ask, why did I follow him along the way? It wasn't that I became his disciple. It was just that I was curious. Anyone would be curious about a person who became your free ticket out of jail. Frankly, I don't understand the man. He didn't lack he didn't act like the Messiah at all. I can appreciate hatred, vicious, cutting hatred. In fact, I had killed Romans and fully intended to do it again until every, every, every Roman was driven from our land. But Jesus... He didn't hate the Romans or intend to kill them. He didn't curse the soldiers as they put a crown of thorns on his head. Instead, after his trial, he stood there like a lamb as they spit on his face. Then he accepted the cross without a murmur, like a person predestined to carry it. I guess I don't understand anyone who doesn't fight back or hate his enemy. Yes, I was, on, I was there on that Friday. Were you there also? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Herod speaks. You ask me if I was there. Me, Herod. Of course I was there. Out of my palace window, I saw him carry his cross and stumble to the ground. He once said, I'm told, that everyone needs to take up his cross to be his disciple. He had some message about service, servicing others. What a fool Jesus was, babbling about sacrifice and selflessness. What did it get him but death? After all, what is life all about except for its many pleasures? Wouldn't you agree? To me, life is such a bore. 
Amusement is the only thing that relieves the boredom. But back to Jesus. I could have saved him, this rabbi, if he had only humored me. Had he just pulled a few tricks, showed me a miracle, or some magic. Who knows? Ha! Huh, I might have even followed him. But he turned out to be a simpleton, a silent one at that who wouldn't even talk to me. Yes, I was there, and through my window, I saw him crash to the ground with his cross. It seemed like the whole world was there. Surely you were there too. Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Mary, mother of Jesus, speaks. Here I am, his own mother, and I couldn't recognize him. The shock went through my body like the tremor of an earthquake as I saw my son carrying a cross. Then Jesus found my eyes. Although I saw piercing pain in his eyes, I also saw peace. Suddenly all the earlier memories began to flood my soul. The memory of that day long, long ago when I said yes to a messenger from God. How could I have known then what yes would cost me? Fleeing with Joseph, to save our child from the king's sword, or searching all over Jerusalem for three days for my little boy. Nor could I ever forget the day when, as a grown man, he laid down his carpenter's tools for the last time. Of course, I was puzzled as he prepared to leave and said those strange words, I have my father's work to do. Father's work. Was dying on the cross the Father's work? When I saw his bruised and swollen faith, faith was all I had left. Faith alone helped me accept God's will that Friday when the universe howled with insane laughter and darkness enveloped the earth and the sun. Jesus' eyes said to me on that Good Friday, Believe in God. Trust in a loving Father. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord of the universe, how difficult it is to accept a world that includes people who are violent, selfish, and deceitful. Sometimes it seems impossible to make sense. Then, like Mary, we must cling to our faith and trust in you. A loving Father who cares about each one of us. We affirm your mysterious plan for our world, that ultimately it will trust. 
triumph over evil. Lord, in the grace fifth station. Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have me. Simon of Cyrene speaks. I was coming in from the fields to do some trading when my curiosity led me into the crowds to see what the commotion was all about. Before I knew what happened, a Roman centurion seized me by the arm and forced me to carry a criminal's cross. Under my breath, I cursed my rotten luck. What place, wrong place at the wrong time. I felt sorry for the poor fellow who was going to die on the cross, but I was mighty glad it wasn't me. Still, I hated the weight of those wooden beams and the roughness of the road. So I asked myself, why has this happened to me, Simon, a poor farmer? Why do bad things always happen to me? But then I saw the face of Jesus, a face I could never forget. He nodded his head as to thank me. Suddenly the cross seemed lighter. It was no longer a burden for me to carry. Yes, this event was forever etched in my mind. As it turned out, I was in the right place at the right time, and I am thankful that I could help him carry his burden. What about you? Were you in the crowd that day? Let us pray. Jesus, Simon, first the shoulder of the cross, angrily be set in the burden. Only with time. Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Veronica speaks. I had known Jesus only from a distance. I listened to his preaching and to his dreams of a kingdom where the wolf would lie down with the lamb. I heard his burning words of hope on the mountainside. I saw him heal others 
and I knew his special kindness towards women. I remember him saying once that when you give a cup of water to the least of your brothers or sisters, you give it to him. When I heard he was condemned to die, I hastened to be near the side of the road leading to Golgotha. I heard him groaning under the weight of a heavy cross, on his face for blood and grimy sweat. I pulled off my veil and ran to wipe his face. As a soldier raised his whip, I winced, but instead of lashing out, he shook his head in disgust and lowered his arm. The master's bloodshot, piercing eyes encountered mine and seemed to say, Thank you, Veronica. As I removed my veil from Jesus' face, I was surprised. His gift for my small deed of kindness was a rough imprint of his face. I was able to help Jesus in my own way. What about you? Were you there when Jesus passed your way? Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus. a beautiful, spontaneous Jesus. gesture. <clears throat> seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Caiaphas speaks. I stood there along the road and saw Jesus fall a second time. He shivered with pain and exhaustion as he collapsed to the ground. It seemed like the drama would soon be over. I was only performing my duties as high priest when they brought Jesus to me and said, Caiaphas, this is a dangerous man. Not only has he blasphemed by claiming to be God, but he has also misled and corrupted the people. Besides breaking the Sabbath, Jesus had predicted the destruction of the temple and driven out money changers on his own authority. After all, who was this Jesus but an ordinary laborer, an unlettered carpenter's son, who had the arrogance to challenge our lawyers and rabbis? But most of all, I had to protect the nation. His so-called Messiah, who had a gift for deceiving the people, could destroy the peace and bring the Roman hordes crashing down upon us. Better that one man die than that the whole nation be destroyed. I saw Jesus fall that day, and I wasn't sure he would ever get up again. Did you also see him fall? Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus.
station. Jesus meets the weeping women. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The woman in the crowd speaks. You won't get any name from me. It's safer to remain an anonymous mourner. I was part of a group of women who accompanied and cared for criminals condemned to death. Jesus was no ordinary criminal. Our leaders had accused him not only of breaking the law, but also of being a blasphemer. And yet I was puzzled. How could a gentle, harmless healer who had a reputation for doing good be condemned to such a cruel death? Who am I to judge? Me, just an ordinary mother. It was only when we met him on the way that we saw how cruel they were to him. And I was touched. My tears became genuine. Imagine our surprise when he turned to us and said, Don't weep for me. Rather weep for yourselves and for your children. That alarmed me because his manner was that of a prophet. He seemed like a man with a message. A message that I didn't fully understand. I didn't understand the mystery about Jesus. But I believed he was someone special. Possibly the Messiah. What about you? What do you believe Let us pray. Jesus, The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The Roman centurion speaks. I was there, a Roman centurion, part of the most disciplined war machine in the world. I watched the king of the Jews as he crashed to the ground and was helpless to get up. Even now my guilt haunts me when I remember what he had done to Jesus in the courtyard. How we mocked him, crowning him with thorns, and played vicious games by striking his blindfolded face. It was my official role to make sure he would die on that Friday. He was just another criminal, another person to be crucified, with Roman efficiency. But then I began to study this man. No, he was more than a man. He was far more than the darkness or lightning that influenced me. It was his manner. I had seen hundreds of men, men face death on the cross. They cursed and screamed. Jesus was different. He had a strange peace about him that went beyond my understanding. He forgave the people who taunted him under the cross. In the end, 
he died like a god with dignity. Finally, under the cross, I was driven to my knees, driven to recognize him for what they said he was, the Son of God. I asked him to forgive me for my cruelty and hardness. I was there when he fell a third time. Were you there? Did you recognize him too? Let us pray. Father, The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his clothing. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The unrepentant criminal speaks. Watching Jesus get stripped of his clothing, I knew I was next. I hated him because he didn't curse the Romans like I did. I despised him for his peaceful face. Finally, I mocked him because they said he was the Messiah. For if he were really the Messiah, he would have led our people to freedom from the scourge of those Romans. So yes, I baited him. I tried to get him angry at the Romans, at me, at anyone. When I couldn't get him angry, I even begged him, save us. If you are the Son of God, save us if you've got God's power. As a desperate criminal condemned to the cross, I would have done anything to save my hide. I wanted to live a little longer, but he seemed to welcome death as if it were a door to a greater life. I was there when he stood with dignity as the Romans humiliated him. He filled my soul with bitterness. Were you there watching also? Let us pray. Loving Father,
the eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The good thief speaks. When they began nailing Jesus to the cross, I heard the gasps of pain, and yet I no heard no curse from his mouth. I told my fellow prisoner to keep quiet. We deserved what we got. But Jesus, well, he was different. From the days of my youth, I was a liar and a thief. Later, I became a professional who stole for a living and a murderer who killed many Romans after joining the insurgents. The truth of right, the thought of right and wrong, rarely passed through my head. But something in Jesus made me look at myself and face myself, maybe for the first time. People told me he talked about forgiveness and mingled with a tough crowd, the sinners, and that he promised a better life in another world. I didn't understand this mysterious kingdom and how it would come about, but I believed in it. Likewise, he talked to God as if he was talking to his father. Yes, I saw Jesus open his arms and get nailed to a cross as though he wanted to embrace the world. I heard Jesus call my name, Dismas. Then he said, This day you will be with me in paradise. I was there and became a believer. Did you become a believer too? Let us pray. Jesus. Twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Magdalene speaks. I watched the life draining from Jesus, watched as he gasped for breath. Jesus had driven seven devils from me and he had healed and welcomed me as a follower. Me, Magdalene, a sinner, a woman. Yes, it was my sins, my weakness, that helped place him on the cross. I felt that. During the hours of his suffering, I understood what sin was, not just the sin of the Roman soldiers, but my sins and every person sins. Sin meant death. Sin meant killing Jesus, my master. Sin meant crucifying him to a cross. In some mysterious way, I understood what Jesus had done. He had taken my sins, our sins, and nailed them to the cross. As I gazed at his battered body, 
words of forgiveness echoed in my mind. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Jesus' words of forgiveness resounded in Mary's heart, too, calling her to forgive those who had killed her son. I was present and saw the agony of Jesus. Were you there when Jesus died for our sins? Let us pray. Jesus, Thirteenth station, Jesus is laid in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Salome speaks. My sons had fled. What irony that I, Salome, remained to watch the soldiers lay Jesus' dead body in his mother's arms. I touched Mary's shoulder while she cradled him as though he were a child again and rocked him to sleep. I felt ashamed when I thought of how I had asked Jesus to place my boys, James and John, at his right and left in positions of power. Jesus had asked my sons if they could drink of the cup of suffering. At the time, they didn't understand, even when, during the Last Supper, he passed the cup of wine which would signify his coming death. My sons and the other apostles ran to safety in Galilee as Jesus as Jesus carried his cross alone. Only later would I realize why Jesus had to suffer and why my petty ambitions for my sons would seem childish and silly. Only under the cross did I understand why Jesus acted like a slave during the Last Supper and wash the feet of my sons. I was there when Jesus died, and I thought of his cup of suffering. Were you there too? Could you drink of his cup? Let us pray. Jesus, sing that Salome wanted for her son. In our ambitious world, see you carrying a cross and die like a criminal, signal complete failure.
14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Nicodemus speaks. After preparing Jesus' body for burial, I helped Joseph, my friend, place Jesus' broken body in the tomb. In truth, Joseph was braver than I, asking for his body and knowing very well that the Sanhedrin and Pharisees with wagging tongues would take note of that action. I admired the rabbi, but from a distance. When I met him, it was always at night under the cover of darkness so that no one would see me with him. Call it human respect or whatever you want, I was afraid of what my peers might say or do if they knew I was attracted to Jesus. I secretly admired his teaching, too, even though he sometimes puzzled me, like when he said, Nicodemus, to enter God's kingdom, you must be born through water and the Spirit. But after the crucifixion, I no longer cared about risking my fellow Pharisees' displeasure. I was angry and ashamed that they had given Jesus over to the Romans to be crucified. I was even angrier at myself for not stepping forward sooner. I was there with Joseph when he placed the stone against the entrance of the tomb. What about you? Were you there on that dark Friday? Let us pray. Jesus. Let us pray. Father, 